Uh, there are various stories that will continue to keep the debate in the country going over the next year. One of those is the National Health Insurance, which continues to receive mixed reaction. The South African Medical Association saying a few weeks ago that about 40% of doctors would emigrate if the legislation is passed. Parliament's Health Portfolio Committee also doing its bit. It's been taking those public participation processes, the public hearings to various communities in parts of the country. Uh, it's included this process, requests for written submissions, as well as the public hearings themselves. Let's get an update now and bring in my guest in studio this afternoon, the Health Minister himself, Dr. Zwelim Kize. Minister, a very good afternoon to you. I mean, as I was saying there, this is one of those conversations that will just continue to keep going in the country. And sadly, there doesn't seem to be any coming together between yourselves and government and those who are opposed to the NHI. So what lies ahead in these few months in 2020? Well, uh, uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, I, I wouldn't say that uh, there is no uh, coming together. I think we've got the South Africans at best with a very robust debate where everyone is expressing their views and we've noted the uh, concerns that have come from the Medical Association. Uh, but we want to assure the South African public that uh, the national health insurance is actually structured to offer the best health care for all South Africans. Uh, we do understand those who are a bit skeptical because of various circumstances. But we want to say that uh, Firstly, the structure of our national health insurance is such that we are taking into account all the comments that they are making, particularly the concern around issues of corruption, uh, the issues that uh, the president has actually been brought to, uh, has uh, uh, been uh, made to focus on was the issue of creating a structure that will uh, oversee uh, the investigation of corruption, which is what is called the Health Sector Anti-Corruption Forum. We think it's going to be really one major uh, boost in the fight against corruption. We will not accept corruption, we will not tolerate it, we will not around, allow any inefficiency and irregularity. So when the doctors <coughs> were surveyed, I think uh, it's still early days and many people feel that uh, uh, when we have not seen the NHI, there will be all sorts of apprehension. We hope that we can iron this out of over the period. The bill is a framework bill and largely uh, the, uh, there's going to be a lot of engagement even on the details in terms of regulation, in terms of practice notes so that uh, the doctors must feel that uh, this system will actually need them and therefore there's no need for them to emigrate. And I want to stay with that point of the doctors, <coughs> the South African Medical Association a survey which was conducted late last year or sometime last year at least indicating that about 38% of doctors who were surveyed had said that should this bill come into law, they would seriously consider emigrating. As things stand today on the 12th of January 2020, why should these doctors not start looking for greener pastures elsewhere? Well, firstly, <coughs> excuse me, firstly, uh, the national health insurance is the system, as a system is actually being run in many countries. South Africa is more the exception that doesn't Im implement it. Canada, UK, uh, Germany, France, uh, you know, Sweden, all the Nordic countries, Japan, Thailand, Turkey, and so on. So most of the countries are actually implementing it. It's a global uh, movement, and the uh, uh, United Nations <coughs> has actually had a high-level meeting where all the uh, heads of state had to commit in the direction of national health insurance uh, or universal health coverage. So that means that uh, wherever we go, most of the countries are moving in this direction. So there will be very few countries where this uh, national health insurance type <clears throat> system is not being uh, implemented. Secondly, uh, in the countries where it's already being implemented, we've actually benchmarked with those countries and we've looked at how they've done it. And so what uh, some of the people are concerned that there's too much power given to the minister is actually a procedural issue. It's like in a, in a, in a, a, a company, uh, one person ultimately is to take responsibility for the entire establishment even though you've got lots of managers and lots of subdi subdivisions and that is because of the just a governance uh, procedure but there will be lots of checks and balances that will ensure that uh, the right people are appointed for the uh, specific job that they have to do there will be proper qualifications that will be looked at there will be teams that will actually vet all the people so that people don't just walk in there because they have got friends they are friends with anybody so we really want to be very firm on how this national health insurance is being done. So, so I would will say the national health <coughs> insurance bill in its current state, in its current form, pass 
in, in this year, in 2020? Well, as it stands now, uh, the uh, uh, National Assembly, uh, through the Portfolio Committee, is going through hearings. There may well be a need, uh, to, uh, depending on how it is being, uh, uh, you know, how it's being received, there may be a need uh, to consider uh, the contributions of various individuals. So we can't preempt what will happen out of the process. However, let me say that uh, uh, we did a lot of research on it, and we are pretty confident that uh, the issues that have been raised are actually aligned to the structure of the national health insurance in various countries. So they are not really uh, off the line, as it were. So, But South Africans have got an opportunity to sit together and look at what are the issues that we need to look into uh, as our, on our, uh, based on our own circumstances so that there might be certain areas where we might need to re-engage and so on. And when that happens, I think that it's going to be important for us to say our professionals, not only the doctors, the nurses who are going to be the backbone of the uh, health services, the paramedical uh, you know, uh, professionals, all of them, we need everyone on board. And we would like to just encourage everyone to you know, work with us, engage with us, give us your ideas, give us your suggestions, but people mustn't fear the national health insurance. It's good for the country. Mm. We're racing against time, but I have <clears> two <throat> questions that I want to squeeze in with you. The first being that the hope from government is that come 2026, the NHI ball will officially have been implemented. It will officially be rolling. As things stand, given the wave of opposition, both politically from previously with medical aid groups and some other people who say it simply isn't workable with the current resources that we have, financially and otherwise, are you certain that we are still on course for that 2026 implementation? Well, we have a target of 2026. We'll do everything to make sure that it's implemented. But I think we need to accept that uh, uh, we're going to be doing this uh, implementation in a phased manner that will be taking into account various circumstances, including the economic situation. And therefore, uh, the, the, the uh, way we're going to be implementing it is going to be very sensitive to what the country is able to afford and can actually... But it's not a certainty at this stage, even for government, that come 2026, we will be at that start and begin to phase it in? No, the, ta the, 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 the target stands. Yeah. We will have to do everything to make sure that uh, you know, by that time we're able to deal with it. I think what's important also to indicate is that the national health insurance in all the countries, they advise us, they say start where you can and build on it in a phased manner, bit by bit, until you can achieve the best that is possible. And therefore, there, there is no such a thing as absolute NHI. What we have got is the beginning of the NHI process, and then a build-up process, and we improve as our circumstances change, and therefore uh, that's how it's going to be done. But we're very confident that uh, we're now in a point of no return. We're moving forward with it. The issue of the details uh, are issues that we can negotiate and engage with all the stakeholders. Dr. Zulimkiza, I'm told we have to wrap it up, but thank you so much for joining us. That was Dr. Zulimkiza, the National Health Minister, speaking to us as we continue to bring you all the latest around the National Health Insurance Bill, and we'll continue to track the public hearings that are set to continue at least until about February in parts of the country.